Hello everyone, welcome back to my Flight Simulator 2024 guide or tutorial series. Uh, this video I'm going to go over the autopilot basics in the Vision Jet G2 and also how to set up the plane to fly a landing procedure. You see we are currently paused above Spain. I've got a flight planning to fly to the LS-30Y for Bilbao. Um, we'll get straight into this. This is the autopilot kind of section here for the plane. I'll go along from left to right, so your heading button here puts the plane in heading mode, so you can see it's selected here. In heading mode, I can rotate this bug here, and it's rotating this blue marker, and the plane will follow whatever wherever that is set. Uh, next to that is the nav button, so that is the follows a flight plan. You can see I'm just going to select this and hit direct to and activate, and it is now in FMS mode, so the plane will follow this pink flight plan line to the next waypoint. Of that is the approach button so when we are ready to arm the approach when we've been given permission to land from the ATC we would hit this button and we would arm the approach. Next section this is your autopilot master button so that turns the autopilot on and off so I'll turn that back on. Uh, FD is the flight director so when the autopilot is off that takes off these magenta lines that the autopilot is following. LVL is your level button so you click that and it will level the plane out and fly level. I'm just going to make sure that it's following FMS. Next is the altitude kind of section. So ALT basically holds the plane at whatever altitude you are currently at. This knob will scroll up and down the current manual selected altitude. And then this button here would put it into flight level change. So then it would try and fly to this altitude at a defined speed or VS. And then using this, we could ask it to fly to a defined altitude at a certain feet per minute. Middle button is VNAV, so I would select that and it would arm VNAV and now the plane would automatically fly to altitudes in your flight plan which I will show you a little bit further on in the video. The next section for the autopilot is the auto throttle. So this is this section down here. So I can hit AT and it arms the auto throttle. The FMS button basically lets the flight computer set what flight speed you need to fly at. You could change that at certain waypoints by clicking this box here and putting in a speed constraint. Or you can select manual and use this knob here to change the speed you would like it to fly at. So if ATC tells you not to fly above 200 knots, you can set it to manual and put 200. And the throttle would automatically throttle up and down to fly us at 200 knots. So just for this, I am going to go to our runway, last heading before the runway, and put the speed constraint 91 knots in. As I know that is roughly our landing speed, so the throttle will automatically throttle us down to 91 knots to set us up for landing. Next, I'm going to put in the minimums for the procedure. So I'll hit this here, go to our procedure chart, and our minimums are down here at 420. I'd hit minimums, type 420, and hit enter. There you go, it's displaying the minimums now. I'll hit B to make sure we've got the right altimeter setting, and I'll unpause the simulation. We are now following a flight plan, descending to 9,000 feet at 500 feet per minute, and the V speed and the vertical navigation is kind of armed there. So if I wanted to hold this altitude, I'll just hit ALT, it's going to hold our current altitude, or if I wanted to go down to 9,000 feet, I could hit V speed and descend at a feet per minute, or ascend if you point up, or hit flight level change, and it will automatically go down at 196 knots. I'm going to put the auto throttle into flight management, so now can see descending so it's going to allow us to descend to our given altitude. I'll just let the plane get to 9,000 feet and then I'll show you how to set up for a landing. Right clicking this heading bug will sync the heading bug or the heading knob will sync the heading bug with your currently selected heading so you can see 45 I'll right click it and it'll change the heading book to 45 which is shown here. There we go down to 9,000 feet now. Let's set up for a landing. I would find out what our next altitude is which is 6,000 feet. Now that altitude hold is selected for 9,000 I'm going to scroll this down to 6,000. That's just as a reminder for myself and ensure that VNAV is armed which it is. And on this screen here if you've kind of got a half screen on this bit just hit full or half, do you want it to say full, uh, to say half, and I'll show you when our top of descent is, which is in 6 minutes and 44 seconds, I think that says, 
and it will show on your flight plan as well your top of descent so if i scroll out here see tod here on the flight plan tells us when it's going to descend down to that i reset the view basically confirm everything ready for landing so speed is being managed by the computer at 250 knots ap is armed auto throttle is armed it's holding altitude of 9,000 feet, but the vertical path is armed, ready to descend us when it needs to descend us. I'll just fast forward the video now until something else happens. So if ATC gave you a different procedure, you would go onto procedure here. Like this. It's like the procedure that they have assigned for you. So if they assigned the ILS Z for 30, you'd click this. And if it was vectors or they'd given you permission to go to the camera initial approach fix, you would select which one you needed. And then hit load or load and activate if they've cleared you to that first waypoint. I'm not going to do that because I've already got one set in. We'll go back to here, back onto this. So at the top here it's showing us our speed and our direction to the next waypoint and at the track and our estimated time en route to the next waypoint. So it'd be 3 minutes 44 seconds until we get to the next waypoint which is a Sigma waypoint. So the plane has just announced vertical track, so I know that it is on the V path and you can see here magenta, it's got 6,000 with a line below it, so it's going to descend us to 6,000 feet. In looking at the VNAV profile is 52 seconds, speed up and slow down the sim to make sure we're going to normal spin rate. There we go, so in 30 seconds it's going to start descending us. And then this will change the time to bottom of descent and it will tell us when we reach this kind of altitude here. So I'll just let the sun play out and show you that. You can see the indicator here for the vertical navigation coming down. So you can see the FMS is already slowing us down to 91. So at this point, I'm just gonna hit manual and I'm just going to speed that speed up to 190 knots, which I know is the knots for flaps in this plane. But I know that now when I set that back to the FMS for the auto throttle, it will take us down to our landing speed. Here we go. It's got a time for bottom of descent. So in 2 minutes, 12 seconds, we'll reach 6,000 feet. And using this, I know that once we get to Karma, it's only going to be a minute and 30 seconds, so we hit Sarah. But this is where I'd be waiting for ATC to give me our approach clearance. And as soon as they give us our approach clearance, I would arm, or our landing clearance, I would arm the approach mode. So for the sake of this video, I don't actually have the ATC tuned in at the moment because it's still very buggy for Flight Simulator. I'm going to imagine that they have given us our landing clearance when we kind of get about 30 seconds away from the S-A-R-R-A waypoint. So again, I will just let the let the simulator play out so you can see all this happening. We're just going to confirm everything for landing. So we are in FMS mode on the autopilot. VPATH is activated and it's descending us to our altitude that we need for this. Zoom in on the screen so you can see the flight plan a bit better. See how close kind of these waypoints are. So I, uh, that beep is telling us that we are getting to 6,000 feet, which is the FMS's altitude that it wants us at. So it's arriving at the waypoint in five seconds. We've passed the waypoint. We are on the approach now. So at this point, I can hit the approach button and it will arm the approach mode. So it's captured the localizer, which is our left right navigation. And now it's captured the glide slope, which is our vertical navigation. So I'll put this back into FMS. 
can double check it's going to take us down to 91 knots, which is our landing speed. I know I'm below 210 knots, so I can drop the gear at this point. As soon as I'm confirmed gear is down, I will drop one notch of flaps. I know it's 190, so if we go down to where the flaps button is. 190 knots for one notch of flaps, below 150 knots for two notches of flaps. I'll reset this here. There we go, I'll just turn the navies off. So 420 is our minimums. So that is our minimum kind of decision altitude. If we get to that point and we have no indications of the runway, I would then perform a go around. So my next video is going to be on how to perform go arounds, and I'm going to do it in the with the completely manual with a G1000 and with the G3000. Um, they're all very similar procedures, but there's just slight differences, but that will be the next video. We'll just speed up the similar here while well, it takes us in at 91 knots. A little bit closer to the runway. So my hands are off the controls now, so the plane is completely flying this all itself. Um, you kind of, as long as you set up early, you don't have to worry about any of the uh, decision making because the plane will line you up with the runway and take you down to the runway itself. See, a bit of a crosswind and in the back. I don't know why it's giving us this runway for landing, but no. Just being sure that our altimeter is synced up. I'll just keep the simulator sped up until we get to about 2,000 feet. There we go, 2,000 feet. So, on the display here, this little green marker here is what you're aiming for once you've gone to idle when you actually go wheels down. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly on that, but that's kind of what you're aiming for. This green marker on the display is where you will actually be heading with your current track and the wind and the speed. Um, so when we disengage the autopilot, kind of this marker that we know if we've got a crosswind, that's what we aim to put on the uh, on the runway. Right, descending us down, this is our runway here. So if I zoom in, you can see with the glide slope and the ILS procedure, too white, too red means we are perfectly on the glide slope. If it was white over red, we would be too high, so we'd have to descend. If it was red over white, so three reds, one white, we we're too low, so we would have to ascend. The moment because we are using a ILS procedure to fly us in, we know we are all lined up with that. There we go, 1,500 feet. So we've got about 1,080 feet until we are at minimums. I can see the indication, so at this point I could turn off the autopilot and hand fly it in, but as I always say, if the autopilot in the plane is going to fly you into the runway, why do it yourself? Let it do as much of the work for you as you can do. Area here is our radio altimeter. I think that's what it stands for. That's basically our actual true elevation above the ground. So even though it says a thousand feet above sea level, we are now 900 feet. So we know the runway is probably 100 feet above sea level. On through a thousand feet, hands back on the control now. See here, it's probably aiming us a little bit to the right, and that just depends where the ILS beacon is for this runway. Lined up with the runway now with this green marker here. It's 700 feet. Then we'll call out minimums when we reach minimums. And then it possibly automatically disconnect the autopilot. If it doesn't, that's when we disconnect the autopilot. we go automatically disconnect to the autopilot at minimums so i'm just going to keep the plane on that kind of glide slope 
again watching that green marker on my main display making sure I'm lined up with the runway with it and it's just a normal landing procedure so there we go brought all these to idle now and I will just let the plane glide down and the radio altimeter reads about 20 I will just pitch back a little bit there we go and then just let the plane glide down onto the runway Go. Wheels down, push a little bit forward and apply the brakes. The brakes are amazing on the vision jet, so it should slow us down very, very fast. And then we would just do the normal procedure for getting off the runway and uh, taxi into the parking. Just stop that there by the parking brakes. So there you go. That's the basics of the autopilot and how to apply a landing procedure in the vision jet. I hope that's helped a few of you out. Uh, any problems or questions, drop them in the comment section and I will see you in the next video which will be covering go around procedures.